Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and welcome to the second and last video in my series of videos where I will teach you how to play Under Falling Skies, designed by Thomas Uli and published by Czech Games Edition, who sponsored this video. In this video, I will be introducing new elements of the game and also the campaign. Each sky tile is double-sided. For your first game, all of the tiles were this side up, which is threat level zero. Each sky tile you flip over increases the threat level by one up to a maximum of four. And the higher the threat level, the harder the game. If you play with threat levels one to three, choose randomly which sky tiles to flip over. In the first video, we were defending Roswell. However, there are other locations you can try to defend. Choose which city you want to play and place it blue side up below the sky tiles. Note the ability on the city tile, this gives you a benefit during the game. Once you have chosen a city, build the base using the configuration depicted here. Washington DC, for example, uses base tile B on the top and base tile C on the bottom. As well as having a different base layout, your starting and maximum energy may be different from before, as well as the length of your damage track. If you fail to defend a city, you can flip the city tile over to the red side and try again with an improved city ability. The blue dice are for robots, which are brought into play by using the blue rooms in your base. Robots are extra dice that work for you. They are never rolled, and they remain in the room where they are installed, working each round. To install a robot, use a dice placed in a blue room, and then take a blue die according to the value of the room. Immediately place that die in an empty space of an excavated room, and place it at a 45 degree angle to show that it's exhausted. This means that it cannot be used itself this round. Installing a robot does not cause the enemy ships to move. Note that you are limited to two robots, although you can remove a robot from the board at any time, such as if you want to install a new one. Robots do not count as a dice placed in that column. That is, you must still place one of your grey or white dice in the column as normal. And remember, if you really wanted to use a space that had a robot with one of your normal dice, you can remove the robot at any time. During the rooms phase, the robots are used as if they were any other dice. But after resolving the robot, instead of removing it from the board, decrease its value by 1 and rotate it 45 degrees. If the robot was value 1 before you used it, remove it from the board instead. You can choose not to resolve a robot, meaning that you just leave it in its space and its value is not decreased. At the end of the rooms phase, rotate all exhausted robots back to their normal position. There are some special cases relating to robots listed in the rulebook. One of them that I will mention here though, is that if a cave-in moves the excavator backwards onto a robot, that robot is buried under the rubble and destroyed. And that is all of the rules for the full game of Under Falling Skies. Choose a city, set your threat level, and try to save humanity. Once you have a couple of games under your belt, I recommend trying out the campaign mode. Before I continue though, please be aware that the next section of the video contains some minor spoilers for chapter one of the campaign. The Campaign of Under Falling Skies is a series of approximately 10 games played in order. It is fully replayable and you will discover new combinations every time you play. The campaign is divided into four chapters, which are the four extra bundles found in the box. Start the campaign by lifting the notebook and the first chapter out of the box. At the top of each bundle, the chapter briefing shows a scene on one side and some important information on the back. Read through this and then choose your first battle. Each chapter will have some scenarios, new cities to defend, and some characters to help you. Make two piles, each with a random scenario, a random city, and a random character from the current chapter. Return the remaining scenario cities and characters to the box for now. They will return later in the chapter. The two randomly created piles represent two simultaneous alien attacks. Unfortunately, you can only defend one of these cities. Choose which one you will try and protect. The other city is annihilated. Remove that scenario, city and character from the campaign. Don't destroy them or throw them away though. Remember, the campaign is fully replayable, so they will come back in another campaign. The scenario lists the special rules that are in use for that particular battle. If you prefer, you can choose your battle just by looking at the comic side of the scenario, leaving the other side as a surprise. Each character has a special ability that you can use once per game. After using the ability, set the character aside to remind you that you cannot use it again that game. Use the blue side of the character during the chapter when you first meet them. The upgraded side comes into play later in the campaign. 
At the start of the campaign, use a sheet from the scorepad as your campaign notebook. Write your chosen campaign name at the top of the first page, and then write the details of your first battle here. Record the result of your game in the box here. If you won, write the number of the threat level that you played on. If you lost, mark the box with an X. The second box is if you lose your first game. Play a game using the red side of the city tile. Use the same scenario and the same character, but if you are playing on a higher threat level, randomize which sky tiles are flipped over. And again, record the result in the box. After saving the city, or trying twice and failing, move on to the second battle. Randomly generate two more piles with the remaining components from the chapter, and then choose one pile to be your second battle. Again, the other city is destroyed. Fight your second battle and record the results. And once you are done with the two battles of chapter one, proceed to chapter two. For the full details about which components are removed from the game depending on whether you win or lose, check the rulebook. You should play the campaign at a threat level that is winnable, but not too easy. The campaign gets more difficult as you go, but you'll find help along the way, so you should be able to play the entire campaign at the same threat level. However, if you want to, you can adjust the threat level up or down during the campaign. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Under Falling Skies. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions about the game, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you to Check Games Edition for helping to sponsor this video, and if you like the videos that I create and you want to support the channel, please consider supporting me over at patreon.com. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.